Welcome to the VEI Standard Art Horse Owners Association Awards. It's a virtual award ceremony. Here to kick things off is Vance Cameron. Good evening, I'm Vance Cameron, and welcome to the PEI Standard Art Horse Owners Association 2020 virtual awards presentation. Hopefully, this will be the last time that we have to do our awards this way. We all are looking forward to being able to be together for a traditional awards banquet this time next year. All winning connections here tonight in both the Horse Awards and the Horse Persons Award will receive their trophies as soon as possible. PEI Standard Board Horse Owners Association board members will be in touch with all the winners. Every year we have some amazing businesses and individuals that support the horse community by sponsoring the trophies for each of our divisions. And this year, for our virtual show, it is no different. While the sponsors will not be here to actually present their awards, they are still excited to support horsemen. Some of these sponsors have been doing this for many years, so please remember to support them whenever you can. The following are the guidelines that are used by the Banquet Committee to determine the winner of each division. In order to be eligible for an award, horses must be wholly owned by a member of the PEI Standard Bred Horse Owners Association. Two and three-year-olds must make at least five starts in the Maritimes during the year. Horses older than three must make a minimum of 12 starts in the Maritimes. Horses other than stakes, invitational, and open mares must have made a majority of their starts at the Charlottetown Driving Park. In the claiming categories, horses must have made the majority of their starts as a claimer. Horses in each category are awarded points based on the number of wins, percentage in the top three, and earnings. Maritime races only are used in the calculation of these points. The horse with the highest point total is the award winner. In the event of a tie, the fastest winning time is used to determine the winner of that category. The same system is used when comparing the category winners to determine the horse of the year. So sit back and enjoy the award show tonight. We'll go through the horse categories and this year the People Awards have been added too. Good luck to all the nominees. Let's welcome Peter Smith, President of the PEI Standard Bread Horse Owners Association. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the presentation of the 2020 PEI Standard Bread Horse Owners Association Annual Awards. As was the case last year, this year's award presentations are being presented virtually due to the ongoing pandemic of COVID-19. As disappointed we are in not being able to host our annual banquet in a live format, our association is equally excited to bring the award show to you virtually as you enjoy the comforts of your home. Tonight we will recognize the finalists and winners of the categories for the Horse Awards from the performances on the racetrack in 2020. And also we will recognize the accomplishments of some of our dedicated horse people with our Human Awards presentations. This past year, 2020, was another remarkable and impressive year on the racetrack with many outstanding performances from our equine athletes of both pacers and trotters of all ages. Each and every year, the quality of our racing product improves and raises the bar to new limits and to new levels for us all to aim for. Of course, this is a direct result from the investment and commitment our breeders, owners, trainers and drivers, and the various industry groups and stakeholders put into the harness racing industry. Collectively, all of us in our racing industry are ever so thankful for the ongoing support every year by our provincial government. For this, we thank our Premier Dennis King and Darlene Compton, our Minister of Finance and Minister Responsible for Harness Racing. With their support, we as an industry have been able to race our horses and enjoy our sport as we know it today through many adverse and trying times. And maybe, most importantly, to allow us to see a positive and vibrant future for the sport of harness racing. Our association, 
the PEI Standard Bred Horse Owners Association through the many volunteers who have participated on our board over the years and with our membership at large has been a mainstay in our racing community here in Prince Edward Island since, since its inception in 1970. Our membership has over 250 active members who all in their own way play a part in helping our industry grow each year. Our association has members from the breeding sector of our industry to grooms, trainers, drivers and owners, all of whom have one common bond, the love for the sport of harness racing. Now on behalf of the PEI Standard Bread Horse Owners Association, I hope you all enjoy our awards presentation this evening and thank you all for your support this past year. Now, let's get on with the show. Well, thanks very much, Peter. That's Peter Smith, president of the PEI Standard Bread Horse Owners Association and uh, some great words there on behalf of the 250 active members from that association. And uh, we're gonna be talking more about uh, some of the sponsors and some of the categories. Vance Cameron kicked it off again. I, I think probably the word in there that uh, we were talking about earlier, wouldn't it be great to be able to get back to these packed houses of the awards, but tonight, it's a virtual awards show. You're with Lee Drake along with Peter McPhee and Kurt Hughes. And we're going to roll through many of the categories, the People's Choice Awards and other great highlights. And gentlemen, it's uh, always great to have the buzz on an award show. But uh, you know what? Uh, we get the virtual awards back again tonight. But I don't think it takes anything away, Peter, from the fact of all the excitement of the uh, nominees and, and eventually some of the award winners. No question at all, Lee. And again, it was, uh, of course, a different year in 2020. But again, uh, Red Shores did uh, quality racing at Charlottetown and Summerside. Lee. It's always great to get an award no matter what year it is and we look forward to handing out the hardware tonight in all the different categories. Now we're in the Universum uh, studio tonight and with technology of course we have the pleasure of having Kurt use part of the uh, program here tonight and uh, Kurt you know what it's uh, as we set off the top uh, it's a virtual award show here tonight but we have several categories and several uh, nominees and eventually some winners you still get all the excitement of the award show. For sure a lot of talent in uh, tonight's lineup of nominees. Um, both equine and people, so I'm excited to get the show going. Well, let's get it going. Uh, onto our award segment uh, tonight. We're going to kick things off. It's sponsored by Crown Rust Control, and it's the two-year-old Trot Colts, and they are our first division tonight on the virtual award show. Here are the nominees. Two-year-old Trotting Colts, sponsored by Crown Rust Control. The nominees for two-year-old Trotting Colt of the year are Dusty Lane Milo, first one here. And the winner is Dusty Lane Milo, owned by Marcia Knox. This one here, positions are unchanged as they arrive at the opening half, led by Dusty Lane Milo. A little go-go into the turn second, the half mile in 103 and two. Treasure on the water continues third. Ocean View Archie trots with the leaders fourth and the trailer. That is first one here. They make their way to the back stretch for time two. Dusty Lane Milo, the leader by two. A little go go is second. Treasure on the water third. Ocean View Archie fourth. First one here is fifth. They're by three quarters. And opening up on the front end, Dusty Lane Milo. The lead now three and a half. Three quarters and one. 34 and 4. A little go go is second. Treasure on the water third. Ocean View Archie fourth. And they're coming for home now. Dusty Lane Milo trying to make every call a winning one. A little go go second. Treasure on the water third. Dusty Lane Milo doubles up Murner. This one, the Lady Slipper. Well, there you have it. Uh, great looking shot there in stretch drive. Uh, Kurt Hughes, uh, I'll tell you, it is uh, a, a convincing win for Dusty Lane Milo. Nice to see uh, Adam Murner do the shoulder check through the stretch there, but uh, had it all in the bag. Yeah, Adam Murner handled this guy well all season long. 10 for 10 in the top three with almost 40,000 made. Just an incredible freshman campaign, and I can't wait to see this guy as a sophomore. I love the way he goes, Lee. Uh, every time he was on the track, uh, he puts his head down and he just goes. And uh, he was on the front end a lot uh, during the year, uh, but he is a little bit versatile as well. As Kurt said, 10 for 10 in top threes. Just a terrific year and a well-deserving winner. That's right. Well, four wins on that campaign and uh, kicks off the virtual award show here tonight with the PEI Standard Bird Horse Owners Association. So congratulations to all the connections there, especially Marsha Knox, who gets the first award on the program tonight. Okay, next up is the two-year-old Philly Trot award and it's sponsored by Winfield Farms. Let's have a look at some of the nominees. 
two-year-old trotting fillies, sponsored by Winfield Farms. The nominees for two-year-old trotting filly of the year are Fireball Friday, Striking Pride, Rich Daydreams, Camco Lexi. And the winner is Striking Pride, owned by John Bro, Jillian Furness, and Paul Morrison. So we got some audio uh, issues here, but uh, it's not going to take away any of the action here in the stretch, uh, Peter. Great looking stretch drive. Yeah, this was between Fireball Friday on the inside, and you can see Striking Pride is coming here late. It was very, very tight at the wire. Fireball Friday was the original winner, but then was placed back, and Striking Pride was placed the winner. So again, that gave this horse the category, Kurt. And a beautiful going trot in Philly as well. And it's just, it's a remarkable, the trot breed, how it's come along over the last 10 years, and just such a talented deep group. Yeah, I agree, and uh, it's uh, so nice to see uh, the victories here tonight. And I know uh, there's a lot of work. You mentioned it, Kurt. There's a lot of work going on right now with uh, the trot breed on, on Prince of Rhode Island, and we're seeing some results of that. And just uh, another way to highlight uh, some of the great work that's happening on Prince of Rhode Island. As we move on here tonight, to now we do have the People Awards still to come tonight. We also have uh, some special guests. We'll get to those in just a few minutes. The premiers here tonight, along with David McKenzie from Red Shores, and of course the Minister Responsible for Harness Racing, Darlene. Compton will be along as well. But right now, a Syntrack Print and Graphics, another one of the great sponsors on Prince Edward Island in the corporate community. And, you know, we talk about the great support that these sponsors have year in and year out. And Syntrack is, is one of those great sponsors. And uh, they have uh, decided to support the two-year-old pacing colt category. And here are the nominees. Two-year-old pacing colts, sponsored by Syntrack Print and Graphics, Inc. The nominees for two-year-old pacing colt of the year are... Saltwater Savage, Who's That? Dusty Lang Goliath, Woodmere Alvin. And the winner is Dusty Lang Goliath, owned by Dan Ross. In the fifth is Dusty Lane Morgan, on the outside six, Elliot Moose, off stride seventh is Woodmere Cecil, and Mr. Riley is at the back. They arrive at the five eight, and the timeless eight. Heads to three quarters now on the front end. Dusty Lane Goliath, the leader from the outside. Woodmere Alvin moving into second. Windermere backspan at the rail third. Dusty Lane Morgan on the outside. Now fourth. Dollars and Spence fifth. Elliot Moose sixth. On the run seventh. Woodmere Cecil. Mr. Riley trails. Three quarters in the books. And now they're homeward bound. Dusty Lane, Goliath along the rail. Woodmere Alvin from the outside. Dusty Lane, Morgan third, coming to the wire next. Dusty Lane, Goliath takes Ferrio all the way. Well, you know, uh, Jill's Berrio, Kurt, over the years, has had some uh, remarkable uh, times in, in the bike. Of course, a multi-O'Brien Award winner as well. And he gets the job done there with Dusty Lane, Goliath, and uh, put in another great performance. For sure, that was a nice colt last year. He had to go up against two of the greatest colts ever to step foot on the racetrack and bet him again at Woodmere Steel Deal. And this guy uh, went right along with them. He made over 30000 in the bank as a freshman and 10 for 12 in the top three. He was super consistent as well. Yeah, and one of his best times of 56 and 4. Well, you know, we talk about it uh, on a regular basis, and that's because uh, the support that we have when we work with other jurisdictions is second to none when we talk about the government support. And right now on the virtual award show here tonight for the PEI Standard Horse Owners Association, here is our Premier, the Honorable Dennis King. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, honoured guests, thank you very much for having me here tonight. It's a pleasure to be here and to bring greetings on behalf of the province of Prince Edward Island. I have to be here tonight virtually as we continue to adhere to the important public health measures that have kept and are keeping our Islanders safe during this most difficult time. I wish to extend my best wishes and good luck to all of those up for awards this evening you are most deserving. It is their efforts and yours that allow us to have a harness racing season in PEI this year and to help us continue to grow this industry as an important piece of our island economy and heritage. I would like to recognize President Peter Smith and the Board of Directors who continue to work hard to advocate for and to promote the industry in Prince Edward Island. I wish to also express my appreciation to everyone 
who acted so quickly in addressing the recent outbreak of strangles at Red Shores. I think it speaks volumes about the dedication of all those involved in this industry that they could combat a pandemic of their own while in the midst of living through another. Now some have questioned our investment in this industry, but to me it's a no-brainer. Like we have done for every industry in this province, when the harness racing sector needed us, we acted quickly because we knew we needed to alleviate some of the costs that go with testing to ensure that we could have racing this year. We've also committed to annually investing in the growth of purse pools. I believe, and you know, that when you put money in the hands of horse people, that money finds its way into the pockets of islanders. The importance of this industry cannot be understated within Prince Edward Island, as it continues to provide jobs and boosts to our economy, and not to mention preserving agricultural land, improving our rural communities, and maintaining a proud racing tradition within this province. As long as I am here, our government will continue to support this industry and those within it to ensure its long-standing growth and success continues. Again, I wish good luck to you tonight, all of you who are recognized with awards are most deserving, and all of you who have been nominated are also most deserving. Thank you for all you do, continue to do it, and I look forward to seeing you at the races in the weeks and months to come. Good racing, good luck, keep up the great work. Thank you. Well, there's uh, some great messages there, uh, kind words from the Premier, the Honourable uh, Dennis King, who's certainly no stranger to harness racing, and uh, that shot there from the Premier's office, and, uh, you know, it's always great uh, to hear from Premier King and uh, when he was here, and uh, their government has been very supportive. And not only that, uh, you know, I just have to say, uh, in terms of all the great work uh, that's been being, being done in terms of COVID and uh, the government and uh, the Chief Public Health, in order to continue to race uh, has been uh, second to none. So we certainly do appreciate that. We're going to move on now to the uh, next category here tonight and uh, the nominees for the two-year-old pacing Philly category. And uh, this is sponsored by Clarence Farm Service. So let's have a look. Here are the nominees. Two-year-old pacing Phillies, sponsored by Clarence Farm Services. The nominees for two-year-old pacing Philly of the year are Need to Know, Little Miss Ava, Dr. Sunshine, Tobin's Brownie, Maggie's Delight. And the winner is Tobin's Brownie, owned by Alex Quinn, Carl Peterson, Amy Lackey, and Brittany Watts. To the midway point with a two length advantage. J.J. Talisa second, first up on the outside. Maggie's Delight third, Little Miss Ava on the cones fourth. Read and we fifth on the outside the trailer. Fernhill Fancy, one minute. And two, Dowling got a breather in the second quarter, just 31 and one. On the back stretch they go, Tobin's Bounty leads it. Second is J.J. Talisa. Maggie's Delight on the outside, third. Fourth up the rail, Little Miss Ava. Then in fifth is Reading and Weep, and a gap down trailer. Fernhill Fancy, they're by three quarters. Tobin's Bounty is still there in 130 and four. Good rating by Dowling. Down to an eight to go. Tobin's Brownie, J.J. Talisa sent to the outside. Little Miss Ava up the rail, third through the stretch. Tobin's Brownie, J.J. Talisa. Here's the line. Tobin's Brownie goes all the way in the Shire Stakes for David Dowling. Yeah, what a great uh, campaign that this Philly had, Tobin's uh, Brownie. Uh, and, you know, when you look at the fact of uh, each in, if you look at some of those stats, are pretty impressive over 2019. Sure is. And I know Kurt will comment a little bit, but, uh, Kurt, what a year she had. PEI Colt Stakes win, Atlantic Sire Stake, the Lady Slipper Goal, the Island Breeders, the Atlantic Breeders Crown, and, of course, the Maritime Breeders. What else can you say about her? Yeah, yeah it closed it out there with, like, six in a row to close it out. Uh, Atlantic Breeders Crown, like you say, Maritime Breeders. A mark of 56 and one with over 50,000 made. Like you say, nine wins from 13 starts. She dominated uh, that division last year. She was incredible. 
And when yeah. she got on the front end, Lee, she was something else. Uh, she did not like horses passing her. When she got there, she pretty much controlled it. Well, you know, it's uh, just a pleasure to watch her in action and uh, throughout the year. And, and you look at those type of stats, uh, Carl Peterson, Alex Quinn, and Amy uh, Lakey, got to be very impressed. And uh, great things, a great future ahead with Tobin's Brownie. All right, well, the virtual award show continues here tonight. And uh, the three-year-old Colt now, the Trotters, uh, it's uh, sponsored by MRSB Chartered Accountants. And uh, this is a great category. Let's have a look at the nominees. Three-year-old trotting colts, sponsored by MRSB Chartered Accountants. The nominees for three-year-old trotting colt of the year are Gotta Get Me Some, Westview Star, Tequila Tuesday, Dusty Lane Dell. And the winner is Tequila Tuesday, owned by Jackie Heffernan. Underway in the outside, fourth. Gotta get me some races, fifth. County line, Scott. He's sixth. Westview Star is seventh. And the trailer, that's Magian Thunder. The half up in 59 and three. 29 and two in the second stanza. Going on to 5 H to kill it Tuesday, the leader. Go with her, second. Mabu Ridge has moved into third. Dusty Lane Dell trotting the rail, fourth. Gotta get me some in fifth. County line, Scott trot sixth. Then at the back, Westview Star and the trailer, Magian Thunder. They're going by the three quarters. Tequila Tuesday opens up by two and a half. Three quarters and one. 29 and four. Second is go with her. Mabu Ridge is running out of real estate on the outside third. They're homeward bound in the Timble Sample. The leader, Tequila Tuesday. Mabu Ridge is coming late, but it's too late. Tequila Tuesday. Tuesday, Mark Campbell in the Tyndall Sample. Well, such a great, uh, another great stretch drive there and another great performance from a Trotter Tequila Tuesday there, guys. And uh, get a, you know, Jackie Hefferman and the Heffermans have done such a great job with this Trotter, but an impressive bank account and an impressive summary from the year. For sure, 11 for 15 in the top three in 2020 with over 40,000 made. A mark of 58 and 3 taken at Summerside. Mark was in the bike on that day, but Miles Heffernan was in the bike as well. A lot of those starts and trade it blows with Mabu Ridge and go with her. Those three kind of duked it out all year, but Miles Heffernan did a great job with this trotter. He was impressive in many of those starts. I'll follow up on that too as well. Uh, like he said, uh, Mabu Ridge, go with her and this guy. They battled all year. It didn't matter where they were racing in the Maritimes. They always seemed to finish 1, 2, and 3. And as Kurt mentioned in the sample there, the, with the record, they closed home in 28 and 4 that day. So again, this guy can really fly when he gets going. Yeah, we always look forward to seeing Tequila Tuesday on the racetrack and some of the great matchups from that year. Well, as we continue on with the virtual award show here tonight, uh, we want to take the opportunity to thank you for tuning in. And uh, for those of you who may be texting or trying to get some information of where you're going to find us tonight well we uh, came up after the live race program and you can get us at redshores.ca just click on the live video link we're moving on to the next category we also have some other guests that are going to be dropping by the virtual award show here tonight with lee drake along with peter mcphee and kurt Hughes. but let's go to another category first and uh, it's a three-year-old philly trotters sponsored by cardigan feed services and let's have a rundown of the nominees Three-year-old trotting fillies, sponsored by Cardigan Feed Services. The nominees for three-year-old trotting filly of the year are Go With Her, Windermere Alley. And the winner is Go With Her, owned by the East Coast Captains. At the midway point in the sixth, the leader, Tequila Tuesday in Heffernan. Mabu Ridge continues second with Go With Her, watching it from third. Terrible 10 at the rail, 4th, and Windermere Alley, 5th, 58 and 3, opening half mile, 29 and 1 in the second quarter, down to 3 eighths to go, Tequila Tuesday, the leader, Mabu Ridge is second, go with her, 3rd, Terrible 10, 4th, Windermere Alley on the outside, the trailer, 3 quarters coming next, Tequila Tuesday will lead them there, Mabu Ridge along the rail, 2nd, go with her, moving 3rd, Terrible Ted, fourth, Windermere Alley, fifth, three quarters in one, 29 and four, going to the seven, eight, go with her, the Philly now strikes the lead, second to kill a Tuesday, Mabu Ridge is third, they're homeward bound now, go with her, the leader, Mabu Ridge is second, third is Terrible Ted, coming to the wire, go with her in a Maritime Breeders' Final in 
second line to Brody McPhee. Well, what a victory there. And, uh, you know, go with her, the East Coast captains, uh, Kurt and Brody McPhee. Uh, just one of those trademarks that Brody really has. He's got patience and it paid off again in that victory. Yeah, he can really trip one out. He does a great job in the bike. And he tripped her out all summer long. And she, she was chasing the boys there with Mabu Ridge and Tequila Tuesday. And it was so nice to see her get up and beat them there in the Maritime Breeders off a great trip from Brody. Exactly. She was knocking on the door all year, Lee, and again, she was never at a place. I think she was 13 for 13 in top threes this year, That's and right, that day yeah. she finally got them late, and there was a big cheer in the crowd that day because she had finally knocked off those other two horses. She'd raced great all year and got the deserved win. Yeah, for sure. A, a big fan uh, club for uh, Go With Her, for sure, and over 34,000, 34,796 made on the papers. All right, three-year-old pacing colt uh, category now is sponsored by Woodmere Farms. And again, I uh, want to thank uh, all the sponsors who have been with uh, the, the virtual award show the last two years and uh, many years prior to that, whether we had the packed houses, uh, of course, where the committee had worked on. We're going to tell you about some of the committee members that helped put this together as well. We heard from President Peter Smith a little earlier, but we're going to tell you about some of the other folks who are working hard behind the scenes. Gail McDonald did a lot of work on the scripts and uh, along with Ken Oaks and some others. So we do appreciate that tonight. As we're live from the Universum Studios, let's have a look at our three-year-old pacing colt category. And here are the nominees. Three-year-old pacing colts, sponsored by Woodmere Farms. The nominees for three-year-old pacing colt of the year are Windermere Frank, Cowboy Logic, Tobin's Rebel, Mr. Kelly, Windermere Ryan. And the winner is Tobin's Rebel, owned by Dan Ross. Pop moving fifth. Mr. Kelly on the outside, six. Now the trailer, nothing to prove, seventh. Halfway home, the leader, Tobin's Rebel, 56 and 1. What's the time? Round the turn they go, and all the confusion here as they race over to the 5 8. On the front end, the leader. That's Tobin the Rebel. Racing from second towards the rail is the big chase. From the outside, third, Wooden Mirror, Roland Pop. On the cones, Windermere Albert, fourth. Racing fifth on the outside. That's Mr. Kelly. Three quarters in one. 25 and two round the turn for the final time. They're at the 7 H pole. Tobin Rebel, the leader. From second, the big ace coming to the outside. Third at the rail, Windermere Albert. They're in deep. Stretch now. Tobin Rebel, the big chase. Tobin Rebel hangs on. What a stretch drive there, and uh, Kurt uh, Tobin's Rebel there tripped the three quarters in uh, 125 and two, went on for the victory with Barrio there, and hung on in deep stretch. Another exciting drive, but what a season too, with over 60,000 in the bank. Yeah, 66,000 in the bank, 14 times in the top three, with nine wins from those 15 starts, and a mark of 54 and three. Just an incredible sophomore campaign by this guy. And what more can you say about Barrio? He just continues to have a good one year after year. And this guy had a great season for sure. You know, guys, I was looking up his lines today, uh, Kurt, and uh, your numbers are bang on there. But again, I was looking at the lines specifically. He reeled off eight in a row during the summer. I believe it started in Summerside, July 11th. He reeled off eight in a row all the way to Inverness in late September. So that's how good he was in 2020. Yeah, it certainly was. And uh, 15 starts, nine wins, 14 times in the top three. Congratulations. And the hardware is going to you. Uh, Dan Ross. Okay, well, just uh, before we get to our next category, um, we're going to once again check in with some of our guests that are joining us virtually here tonight. And our next guest is the general manager of Red Shores Properties in Charlottetown and Summerside. Uh, let's hear from David McKenzie. Hi, I'm David McKenzie, general manager at Red Shores. On behalf of all the staff here at Red Shores, all 200 and plus employees, we'd like to congratulate the Prince Rhode Island. Horse Owners Association for a unbelievable year uh, in a very difficult year. Uh, 2021 will go down as uh, a very difficult year to do any type of business, um, but I'm really pleased with the way that uh, the Owners Association, the Industry Association, Red Shores came together to ensure, first of all, that the business of racing remained very healthy for all horsemen on PEI, horse folks on PEI. And, uh, and um, I'd like to congratulate Peter and his board for that. I'd like to commend all trainers, owners, grooms, drivers, uh, caretakers, 
paddock judges, uh, everybody involved in the industry for putting their, uh, their, you know, doing a great job of ensuring that we got through a, an, an incredible year, both with COVID and with the strangles. Um, so thank you very much, and we look forward to a fantastic season that kicks off very soon. Okay, well, thanks very much. Uh, that's David McKenzie, who is the uh, general manager of Red Shores Properties in uh, Shellotown and uh, Summerside. And I just want to pick up on a couple of notes that he made because he, he's made some great points and the fact that it takes a lot of work from a lot of people and a lot of different organizations, uh, Peter and Kurt, to make this happen. And I think, you know, we talk about the virtual award show here, but uh, if you look at all the different organizations, whether you mentioned the Horse Owners Association, the Industry Association, all the horse people across Prince Edward Island working with COVID and, of course, that Strangles file as well. Uh, it really is quite impressive what uh, the island industry is able to pull off. Yeah, absolutely. And just following up on David's words, kudos to everybody, Lee, that uh, came together. And uh, we had a great racing season. We were fortunate to race. Other jurisdictions weren't able to race. Uh, PEI was able to race. And we were fortunate to race in Charlottetown and Summerside. And everyone did a nice job. Yeah. You know, Kurt, uh, when we talk about... The pleasure of seeing these equine athletes uh, perform on the track week in and week out, that, that in itself is something. But uh, as David mentioned, uh, you know, it takes a lot of work from a lot of people. And uh, everybody seemed to have that, that phase where everybody was going to work together to get this done. Yeah, it brought everybody closer together. And everybody did a fantastic job when you consider uh, other jurisdictions, as Peter mentioned, uh, unable to race. And the way we were able to race and carry through the stake season and all the Gold Cup and Saucer last year. It was just incredible that we were able to pull that off. feel very fortunate. Yeah, you know, uh, you mentioned some of the signature events there. The governor's plate in Summerside, I think, was one of those stories that really stuck with a lot of people. There was a lot of, um, you know, curveballs, I guess you could say, thrown at us throughout the year. No doubt about it. But that, that win with Bugs McGuire and Brody McPhee and, and uh, Wade Sorry and Walter Simmons, I, I think was really one of those highlights you just can't say enough about. The, it was my favorite race of the year. I've, I've said that a couple of times. And, and again, we've had so many great races throughout the years. The Gold Cup was great last year as well. But to me, the personal side of that made it for such a great race in Prince Edward Island. To me, the race of the year in PEI last year. Yeah, it was certainly something else. And then, of course, the Gold Cup with the Campbells and that victory as well. All right. Well, we have some other uh, guests that are coming up. The Honorable Darlene Compton, when we talk about government support, she's going to be coming up here on the virtual award show here tonight. Thanks to have you. Uh, great to have you tuned in tonight. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. Let's move on with some more categories right now. And this is the three-year-old pacing Philly category. And it's brought to you by Metro Home Building Center. And here are the nominees. Three-year-old pacing Philly, sponsored by Metro Home Building Center. The nominees for three-year-old pacing Philly of the year are... Dusty Lane Zambuca, JJ Gracie, Woodmere Skyroller, Better Than Bobby. And the winner is Woodmere Skyroller, owned by Reg McPherson. In the six, Woodmere Skyroller is the leader. Second at the rail, Ms. Moyes. Nana said so is underway in the outside third. Live and let die in the cones fourth. Red Dirt Star second over fifth. Lorne Valley Barbie six. 57 and 4 was the opening half mile. It's Woodmere Sky Roller, the leader. Ms. Moyes on her back. Nana said so. Right now, a stall third. Fourth at the rail, live and let die. Red Dirt Star on the outside, fifth. Trailing the field, but not out of it. Lorne Valley Barb, three quarters in one. 27 flat on the turn of the final time. Going to the 7 8. Woodmere Sky Roller extending the lead late. Ms. Moyes second. Nana said so, third. Red Dirt Star. Fourth, deep stretch now. Woodmere, Sky Roller, and Brody McPhee on top at every call in the Shire Stakes. Well, there you have it, uh, Woodmere Sky Roller with the three-year-old pacing filly uh, category here. And Kurt off the half in 57 and four, three-quarters tripped in 127. And, I mean, a single-season earnings record to boot to go on that. But she was on fire on the racetrack. She sure was 23 times in the top three with 12 wins out of 24 starts, over 87, almost 88,000 made. And the same connections just two years prior broke the earlier record from Gordy's last call with Socket Away. Uh, Reg and Kevin McLean doing a great job year after year. And that was just two years ago with Socket Away. He had that incredible sophomore campaign where he banked 85,000 to come back two years later with the best Philly. Uh, in the Maritimes and banked that much money, which is just incredible. And congratulations to those connections. 
You know what, Lee, I was talking to Brody McPhee uh, earlier in the year, just earlier in her season, and he said to me about that, the Philly Woodmere Skyroller, she knows where the wire is. And I looked at her stats this year. She won a lot of close races. Mm -hmm. Now, she won a lot uh, where she was pulling away from the field, but when you go back and look at the stats, she won a lot of races that were very, very tight at the end, but Brody always said she could reach up and find the wire when she needed to. Yeah, you know, Woodmere Standard Breads uh, have uh, bred some great horses over the years, and, you know, when you uh, look at a filly like this and uh, how dominant it was on the racetrack as well, there were a lot of small miles in those winter circles uh, around the Maritimes, no doubt about it. Congratulations to all the winning connections in the three-year-old pacing filly category. All right, we're going to move now to the uh, Claiming Horse of the Year. It's sponsored by Agro Co-op Association Limited, another a sponsor that has been with the Horse Owners Association for many years, uh, sponsoring these events. And uh, only one horse fit that category this year, and uh, the claim and no claiming mares. So uh, we're going to take a look at this, and uh, that's that's rare. It doesn't happen very often, but uh, let's have a look at the at the nominee. Claiming Horse of the Year, sponsored by Agro Co-op. The winner is Bob Johnski, owned by Bob and Jeff Skinner. Mere Soul Six, Act of Any Seven. Post time favorite, Arnold the Paper Boy, with some work to do. Trailing on the outside. They're pairing up. Four in, four out. 59 and 4 was the half. They're over to 5 H next. Payback the leader, Bob Johnsky, the challenger. Third is Silver Hill Lightning. Jetta flies on the outside. Fourth, that the rail, California Jack. Nowhere to go. Fifth, Zach the men. Three highs. Going six, racing from seventh. That's Arnold the paper boy. Woodmere Soul is now the trailer. By the three quarters and the three wide. 90 seconds flat was the three quarters. Bob Johnson made the lead late. Down to an eighth to go. Payback is second. Jetta flies third. Sack the men. Silver Hill Lightning looking for room. Down the stretch they come. Bob Johnski opening up late on the wire. Bob Johnski will win for Brody McPhee. Well, there you have it, and the look at the claiming horse of the year and the category there with uh, Bob Johnski. And uh, well, what more can you say? I mean, put in an impressive stats throughout the year. Was always on the game every time went behind the race, uh, right behind the uh, starting gate, and uh, pulls off the award winner tonight. Yeah, for sure. A mark of fifty-eight and two last year, and always had a great burst of speed for about a quarter of a mile. And if you used him at the right time, he definitely answered the call. And he looked good there on that replay for Brody McPhee. He handled them quite well, too. And I got a soft spot for horses where the spreader's there. And the, he had that spreader on the right, on that right leg there. And he just goes, he tries, he's very determined. And I like watching him week after week. And again, uh, Lee, again, we seem to be talking about Brody a lot. He did a great 2020, but uh, I looked up the stats today on Bob Johnsky. Brody drove him uh, every time to his wins last year. So, again, they got along well, as Kurt said. And uh, Brody just seemed to have a knack with that guy when he's on the track. And uh, they did get the job done quite a few times in 2020. Absolutely. I, I know that every time uh, we on the broadcast, when we set up and we go to set up uh, some of the horses on the track, anytime Bob Johnsky stepped on the track, more often than not, it was going to be in those top picks in there. Just one of those horses that you couldn't leave out on some of those tickets. And uh, certainly wasn't left out here tonight, who uh, walks away with the hardware and the claiming horse of the year, sponsored by Agro Co-op Association. Well, the Age Trotting Horse, it's sponsored by uh, Dusty Lane Farms, and uh, we'll have more on this in just a minute, but always a category that I look forward to each and every year, and uh, certainly every time they step on the racetrack, they always put on a great performance. So let's have a look at some of the nominees on the Age Trotting Horse. Age Trotting Horse, sponsored by Dusty Lane Farms. The nominees for Age Trotting Horse of the Year are Mile Hill Willie, Glider Man, Freddy, Libero, Star Photo. And the winner is Freddy, owned by the Three Wiseman Stable. And an unchallenged Freddy is halfway home. Daisy River is second, Glider Man third, Hop Up is taken over fourth, Mile Hill Willie trots the rail fifth, and Cheeky Little Minx is sixth. 58 and 4 was the half. Consecutive 29 and 2 splits. It's Freddy the leader up the back stretch. Second and final time. Three quarters next. Daisy River is second. Hop up on the outside third. Racing from fourth, Glider Man. Mile Hill Willie takes out fifth. And the trailer, that is Cheeky Little Minx. They're on by three quarters. Freddy is still there in one. 28 and two! 
down to an eighth to go, and Freddy's homeward bound. Daisy River is second, hop up third, Glider Man fourth, Mile Hill Willie and Cheeky Little Miss. All oh, the veteran Freddy, he brought the A game. Freddy all the way for Campbell. Well, Freddie, all the way for Campbell, uh, you know, there's a word I use in uh, when we're teeing this guy up, uh, and it's superstar. And uh, the way uh, I looked at it, Kurt, uh, actually, when we're watching that replay there, it's not very often you see Freddie wear number one. He's usually, and had to, uh, many times in his career, he's had to work it from the outside and always finds that trip. And uh, so it's interesting to see him off the rail there because it's not very often he get a chance to leave from there. Yeah, I typically dominate it and had to be uh, handicapped with the outside post, but Last year, um, he's getting a little older, and he was drawn inside a little bit more. But when you look at the stats, 16 times in the top three out of 19 starts with nine wins in that mark of 57 and two, almost 15,000 in the bank. And guys, this guy is 69 lifetime wins. Just incredible. What an acquisition by the three wise men just a few years ago. Yeah, and as uh, Kurt said, uh, and we saw it on the, uh, on the replay there, Freddie and Campbell hitting the wire. How many times have we heard that over the past number of years at Red Shores? Freddie dominating the trot division and winning. And again, three Wiseman, uh, it was a perfect buy for them, uh, Lee. And it's worked out so well. He's just been a class act the entire way. And he's a treat to watch every time he steps Yeah, he out. certainly is. And he's a treat to be around. Uh, I know he doesn't like to get his picture taken every now and then. but uh, And he's had that several times. But uh, if you talk to the Campbell uh, family, of course, just one of the favorites uh, at around the farm. And uh, certainly uh, one of those uh, Bearcats on the racetrack. I have to say, though, the three Wiseman stable with uh, Ray Murphy, uh, Freddie McDonald, and uh, Kent Scales. And I just want to say something about uh, Kent Scales for a second. Uh, and I think it's important. You know, with all the change that's happening in technology, now we're in the virtual, of course, we're doing a lot of things. But when we started the race day broadcast back in the day, Kent was a deputy minister of tourism at the time. And he really felt that uh, he wanted to support it and tourism was going to support it at that time. And he, he really did step up and, and, and saw the vision of what we were trying to do. So I never forgot that. Very important, Lee, because again, in the early days, uh, you didn't know how it was going to go. But again, you had support from people people like Kent and uh, look where we are now uh, all these years later you go on to redshores.ca and you want to make sure those live races are there we got a lot of people watching these days that's right so <laughs> congratulations to all the connections and I know there are several that work with Freddie week in and way, uh, week out so congratulations on winning the age trotting horse so let's move it over to the age trotting mare now sponsored by Gorman Controls Limited and uh, we'll roll through some of the nominees here for you and be right back with more here on the virtual award show Age Trotting Mare, sponsored by Gorman Controls Limited. The nominees for Age Trotting Mare of the Year are Sailor Blue, Wimro Gem, Supreme Monarch, Hop Up. And the winner is Hop Up, owned by Keith Campbell. Moving up six is Summit City Nate, then it's Star Photo 7th, and the trailer, that is Magian Tango 58. And two, the rolling along in the open trot, let by the mare hop up at the 5 8 pole. Freddy from the outside is second, third up the rail, Glider Man. Mile Hill Willie is there on the outside, fourth. Libero on the rail, fifth. Summit City Nate, sixth. Then in seventh, Magian Tango swinging out three wide, trailing the field. Star Photo, they're by three quarters. Hop up, he's still there from the outside, Freddy. In at the Rail Glider Man, Mile Hill Willie, looking at three wide treatment, fourth, three quarters in one, 28 in one, and they're coming for home. Hop up, he's still there. Freddie on the outside, second, Mile Hill Willie, third, deep in the stretch now. Hop up, almost there. Here's the line. Hop up. Beats the boys. Mile Hill Willie was closing up on the outside. Freddie in the middle, one. 57, one, hop up if her nose lands on the line first, that's a track record. Well, when you talk about uh, track records and exciting moments uh, throughout the year, you had several of them in 2020. And when you look at the age uh, trotting mare uh, categories there, Kurt, uh, tell you what, hop up beating the boys in that particular event there, that had to be a thrill for Keith Campbell and all the connections in that race. For sure, Keith Campbell does a great job with her and having to race the boys week in, week out, much like go with her in that three-year-old division of trotters, reaching up and beating them was so incredible. And I remember working that night, it was just a memorable moment. And for her to break the record there, 57-1, and one, 
was just incredible to fend off the challenge from the boys late in the mile. It was great to see. I agree, Lee, I, uh, Lee and Kurt. I was watching that night, and I was cheering for her because, uh, you know, we all know how good Freddie and Mile Hill Willie are, but when Hop Up cuts that out, and you see Corey checking over yeah. at the three quarters he's at the top looking. of the lane, yeah. and he knows Freddie and Mile Hill Willie are coming, and they're going to storm home, and he's just trying to get there, and in the end, Hop Up wins. And I think we were all just happy that night for Keith Campbell and all the connections and Hop Up's great year. To me, it was one of the best races of the year. It really was at Charlottetown. Yeah, it was uh, It was quite a thrill for sure. And, you know, uh, when you think of uh, future and laying the groundwork for the future with the uh, age-trotting age mares, you know, you got to think of people like uh, Cam McPhee and others who stepped up as a sponsor with uh, the Island Oceans Trot Classic uh, and uh, is going to be back with it again uh, this year as well. So it really does. There's a lot of work goes on uh, behind the scenes and really setting the framework and, and the foundation, if you will, to keep keep the breed going. And uh, when you see exciting uh, finishes like that and winners, uh, it certainly says a lot for all the work that's going on. So congratulations once again to hop up there, taking the uh, age trotting mare category here tonight. It is the virtual award show the PEI Standard Horse Owners Association and uh, we heard from uh, Peter Smith president a little earlier James Pro is vice president Gail McDonald is the treasurer and Betty Cregan along with Melissa McRae your secretary and Eddie Doucette, Thane Arsenault, Charlene Cipher, Corey McPherson who we just saw in action there guys Cindy McDonald, Robbie Hughes and Stephen Murphy just some of the folks that make up that great team as you watch the virtual award show tonight, uh, it takes a lot of work and organization behind the skills. So thank you behind the scenes. So thank you for that. Well, speaking of a lot of hard work, uh, right now the virtual award show. Let's hear from the minister responsible for harness racing on Prince Edward Island. She is the finance minister as well, and she's the minister responsible for harness racing. Here is the honourable Darlene Compton. Hello and good evening. I'm pleased to be with you all virtually and remain confident in our vaccination program that we'll be able to do this in person next year. I would like to congratulate all nominees and winners at tonight's PEI Standard Bread Horse Owners Virtual Awards. Tonight we recognize special and lifelong achievements and contributions to this great industry. I would like to wish all horse owners, breeders, trainers, drivers, grooms and officials good luck in the coming season. I'm particularly proud of the involvement of many young people in PEI's harness racing industry, which is fostered at our matinee tracks, such as my home track of Panette Raceway. 2020 was a challenging year as the industry had to adapt and deal with the pandemic. This was made no less easy earlier this year due to the outbreak of strangles at Red Shores in Charlottetown. I'm pleased to report that due to the quick action of the Harness Racing Industry Association and the support of this government, we have been able to bring that under control so that the horses remain safe and healthy and that the tracks can operate safely. I would like to thank all horse people and the team at Red Shores for quickly implementing the biosecurity measures and the, collabor and the collaboration of everyone involved to get the outbreak under control. We have a vibrant harness racing industry here in Prince Edward Island that we can be proud of and this government will continue to be strong supporters and provide the support that this industry needs and requires. As we look forward to this upcoming year, I wish everyone a safe racing season and look forward to seeing you all at the track. Thank you. Well, thank you. That's the uh, Honorable Darlene Compton, Minister Responsible for Harness Racing here on Prince of Rhode Island. And we're back to the uh, virtual uh, award show here tonight. And uh, she touched on a couple of things there, guys, that maybe we could zero in or key on. Uh, first of all, the matinee track program, uh, very, very important. It's a long history uh, of supporting here, and we've seen so many great drivers come out of that program. And she mentioned young people involved in it too, Peter. At the end of the day, you know, uh, we're we're leading in the country in terms of young young people involvement. I think all you have to do, Lee, is watch Red Shores Racing, and you'll see in the winter circle every night, you'll see the young folks that are coming up looking after the horses. They're all young people down there, Lee, working around the industry and the sport, which is great for the game. It happens both in Summerside and Charlottetown. You touched on the matinee. Corey McPherson, Mark Campbell, the McDonald boys, they all went through the program, Lee. Very, very successful here in PEI. And it is a great, uh, it's just a great respect for the racing in PEI. They've done a great job. You know, uh, Kurt, uh, you as a driver as well know how important it is uh, to have a, a, you know, a ground where you can, you can learn uh, your early lessons from some of the great people here in Prince Edward Island. And, and we have a hotbed of harness racing here in Prince Edward Island. But uh, I think the minister has had some kind words about young people and the involvement of all the different associations. For sure. Young people are so lucky here with the matinee program. They get to get that young experience there on the track, uh, going behind the gate, going in with horses. It just it helps them in their career later on. And you can really tell the guys who have come up through that program, just the way they sit in the bike, 
Uh, they're so much more comfortable. And if you look around North America, the leading drivers, a lot of them have come from our matinee program. So pretty proud of that. You know, it's uh, one of those things when we talk about uh, the involvement, uh, one thing that uh, it's never lost on me is the amount of education on Prince Edward Island because of all the horse people that you have here, whether it's the Hall of Famers that you're dealing with uh, and you have the opportunity to pick up the phone and talk to, or the ones that are still in it day in, day out, they have so much knowledge and it's so important. Well, Kurt's right, Lee. And again, uh, we've sent so many people away who have done very, very well. Just so many people come to mind, like Wally Hennessy. We're going to certainly have a night for him coming up as well. Paul McKenzie. There's just so many people that have gone on to do great things, Lee. It all started here in Prince Edward Island, Lee. And before them, generations before them, done very well. And they were able to take that knowledge and take it to different places all around the world and be very successful. Well, we, uh, we are going to continue on now with our next category coming up. We have the People Awards that's on uh, the second half of our program here. And uh, right now, a category that I was looking forward to is the uh, age pacing horse category and uh, let's have a chance to look at some of the nominees here as the virtual award show with the PEI Standard Horse Owners Association rolls on. Aged Pacing Horse sponsored by Dean Richards. The nominees for Aged Pacing Horse of the Year are Rose Run Quest, Silver Hill Buddy, Pillage and Burn, Time to Dance, Woodmere Ideal Art and the winner is Time to Dance owned by Brent Campbell and Matthew McDonald. Tied fifth, moving up sixth, Rose Run Quest, then seventh, Woodmere Ideal Art, Simple Kind of Man, Trails the Field, Halfway Home, Incredible, 54 and 1, arriving at 5'8", the leader, Time to Dance, in at the rail, Liz Burn the two-hole ride, Casimir Richie P, all out third, up the inside, screen cast, father of the year, three wide fifth, now in six, Woodmere Ideal Art, three quarters in one, 23 and three, they race round the turn, eighth of a mile to go, they're homeward bound, time to dance, and Mark Campbell, Liz Byrne, up at the outside, Woodmere, Ideal art closes up. Time to dance. Mark Campbell in the gold cup and saucer. They go all the way. They certainly did go all the way. And, uh, you know, uh, guys, uh, Mark Campbell's had uh, an incredible career so far and many incredible years to go. But to win the Gold Cup and Saucer, I think, with that connection, those connections, with that horse, at that particular time, it must have been such a thrill. And, uh, you know, Kurt, to go wire to wire like that in the Gold Cup and Saucer and hang on in, that was one thrilling race. For sure. And kudos to Brent Campbell, the owner, and uh, Matthew McDonald. Uh, they scooped this guy out of Flamborough, out of a 15,000 condition claimer. And to bring him home, I don't know if they had Gold Cup and Saucer on their mind, but my goodness, did they ever get a bang for their buck? Uh, purchased for eighteen seven fifty, and he made sixty thousand dollars, tripling their investment and the thrills he brought them on uh, to finish out the year with invitational wins, the Cecil Landner win, the Gold Cup and Saucer. I remember talking to Richard Campbell uh, last summer, leading into the Governor's Plate, and he finished, you know, third in his elimination. And what, what do you think of this guy? And I said, geez, he might get a call there in the final and he goes out and finishes second adam murder was in the bike on that day and then mark campbell back in the seat and then gold cup and saucer i mean he was just incredible and to finish out the year the way he did was just a uh, horse of a lifetime for those boys absolutely and uh, lee i was looking up his stats as well kurt touched on just how good he was after the gold cup uh, so i was looking at that he reeled off eight in a row to end the year how about the last six starts the final quarter 27 and 1 27 and 1 27 and 4 27 and 4, 28 and 27 and 3, the last six starts of his campaign in 2020. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, 15 starts, 10 wins, 13 times in the top three. The best win time, 151 and 4. And uh, check that out, 60,950. 
in the bank. Congratulations to all the connections. You know, I can I can tell you, Richard uh, Campbell, I, I was on the track, interviewed Mark, of course, coming back for the Gold Cup, and he was telling us about this horse and how, how he's a farm horse and he just loves to be around. But Richard Campbell had a smile on his face. I couldn't believe it. Uh, and you know, it, it's and so it was it was so thrilling to see that family uh, come back in the winner's circle. And, and he said to me, I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. We actually have the Gold Cup. He deserves it. Uh, he's been around a long time, Richard, and Jacinta as well. She's a big uh, fan of the game as well. And again, uh, great parents to Brent and uh, just all the connections involved. It was a tremendous Gold Cup and Saucer win for them in 2020. Yeah, all great right. family. We're so happy to see them win it. Yeah. Well, I know they get the pictures and the glory and the trophy to go with it. So uh, they are part of history. And that's uh, one thing that uh, they can't take away. That's for sure. All right. The Age Pacing Mares. It's sponsored by McRae, Backhoe and Trucking. And boy, there's a sponsor that uh, of all the sponsors that we have in here as well. They, they certainly uh, show up in a lot of different lanes. Uh, in our harness racing, uh, whether it's part of uh, the investment that Donnie McRae and them do, but they, they're always part of the awards. And here they are with the Age Pacing Mares. Let's have a look at some of the nominees. Age Pacing Mare, sponsored by McRae's Backhoe and Trucking. The nominees for Age Pacing Mare of the Year are Southwind Ion, Collective Wisdom, Dream Fairs and Fire, Colleen Finale. And the winner is Dream Fairs and Fire, owned by Ryan and Everett McLeod. Jordy's hope they're halfway home, and Arc Light cleared the lead in line to Adam Murner, 57 and 1 for an opening half mile, 28 seconds flat in the second quarter. Arc Light, the leader, Dream Fairs and Fire second. There goes Woodmere Cella to the outside third. Traces of Purple fourth. Fifth on the outside is Lion Jenny Lee. Then the trailer, Jordy's Hope, they're over to three quarters. And Woodmere Chella takes over late for McPherson. Dream Fairs and Fire now second. Arc Light back pedal third. Three quarters and one. 26 and three. And they're coming for home now. Woodmere Chella the leader. Dream Fairs and Fire. Now in third is Arc Light. Lion Jenny Lee fourth. Coming to the wire. And she has won again. Dream Fairs and Fire and Mark Campbell. You know, I couldn't help but uh, have a look when I was going. When they were going by the half there, uh, it was uh, interesting. Dreams there, Zen Fire, was uh, in the pocket. Campbell always has his horses well positioned. That's why he's one of the, the best drivers. But uh, they rolled that second uh, panel there, Kurt, in 28 seconds. And she went on uh, to win. That was an impressive victory that day. Yeah, she was. What a Cadillac to drive. And... Uh, Mark Campbell um, didn't always drive her. Jason Hughes had a great win there in the Confederation Mares Series. Uh, Adam Murner had a great win with her. She could leave so hard off the gate and get placed up close to the lead, and you could cover her up or do it on the front, and she could fire down the pass lane or move to the outside. She was so versatile, and I bet just a pleasure to drive, and what a season she ended up having in 2020. Great buy for the McLeod guys. They must mm -hmm. be very happy with this horse. Yeah. I mean, uh, terrific, as Kurt said, very versatile. She could bust the gate and get onto the front and really go gate to wire, coast to coast, no problem. But you saw her there sit sitting in the hole. Uh, Mark didn't panic, moved her late, was able to win. So, again, very versatile and just a super, a super buy for the McLeods. They must have been very happy. And congratulations to the ownership group uh, on this award. And, you know, what's interesting uh, off Kurt's uh, comments there. There are many drivers who uh, celebrated victories with uh, Dream Bear Zen Fire as well. They all have different tactics, and she able, she was able to adjust to each and every one of them and uh, pull off those victories. So uh, it's, it's really something else. And, uh, yeah, Everett and uh, Ryan McLeod and all the connections with uh, Dream Bear Zen Fire. Congratulations to you. All right. Well, next is our fan favorite award, and uh, it's sponsored by the Shelltown Vet Clinic. I think of uh, all the awards that we have on the program, of course, you always have that horse that has that connection uh, with the fan. And uh, year after year, there's always one that pops up. They've been around for a while, and they, they uh, just every time they step on the racetrack, you can feel uh, the fanfare that they have. And uh, so, with that horse that arrived in uh, PEI, the mare arrived in uh, 2013, and um, she was brought many thrills and much joy to her harness racing family. And I think you know who we're talking about here, Julep Hanover. And uh, we're going to give you a, a clip that uh, Ken Morkin and I played on the pregame with race day uh, because uh, we want to do and honor the mayor who uh, finished things off uh, on uh, New Year's Eve with the final start. And uh, here's a look at that clip now. 
we had so many areas to go in any direction tonight for the pregame, but we thought it would be cool to go back to a mayor who retired on New Year's Eve, made her final start. That's uh, Julep Hanover, Wade Myers, the owner, trainer, and driver. I know Wade and Sandy and all of the connected to that horse. Uh, it was quite a, a moment, uh, New Year's Eve, when that horse came out on the track. There was a retirement pace early in the program in race 7, and then she made her final start coming up on race 12, and she did not disappoint. Absolutely not. A bred by the famed Hanover Shoe Farms, the top name nursery in the game in Pennsylvania. And now a 12-year-old daughter of Western Ideal Race. Nine season, a real iron horse, blossomed in her later years, caught the winning habit, took her mark of 156-1 and one at Charlottetown at age nine. A very consistent horse who made 297 starts, 43 wins, 47, uh, 40 second seconds, and 41 thirds. And as you mentioned, trained and driven by Wade Myers, she was a longtime fixture in the Phillies and Mares Open at Red Shores, notching nine, eight, and seven wins in her last three seasons. Julia Panover certainly didn't look like she wanted to retire. No, certainly. And uh, had to leave from post six on New Year's Eve, Ken, in against a, a very competitive group. And like she always does, she shows up. And uh, Myers had her in good position earlier on. Let's pick up the action here with Vance Cameron with the call from the half. First up. On the outside third, the time to win will ride the rail. Fourth around the turn, the opening half mile, 58 and three. Racing from fifth up the inside. As you move over to the 5-8, Warhol Wee Eula, ground saving trip for her. Tell me why on the outside six, Dre's good pal while on the outside seventh. Arc line at the rail eighth, and now the trailer ninth is Collective Wisdom. They're over to three quarters, and traces of purple is still there, and it's getting late. Julep Hanover is second. Way wide, that's tell me why third. Up the rail fourth, the time to win. Three quarters up in one, 28 and four. They're coming for home, led by traces of purple. Julep Hanover has a shot at her. Up the inside, the time to win. Coming on third, they're in deep. Stretch now on the wire. Traces of purple doubles up Kenny Arsenal. Then the time to win with Julep Hanover. One, 58, three. So there I have a Ken, uh, 158 and three, as I said, well positioned in that race. And uh, really her final start of her career, she goes out the way she prepares for every race and sort of, you know, at the end of the day, competes in every race. She was always in the mix and she did not disappoint. And she was well day. driven. Sorry, Lee. She was well driven there as well. Uh, Mr. Myers gave her every chance to win, capping her career with that hard charging third in the final uh, start on New Year's Eve. All the best to Julep Hanover on a healthy and happy retirement and to Wade Myers and uh, his crew. A job well done. All right. So congratulations to all the connections there with Julep Hanover. Well, what a nice clip there, and uh, we thought we'd play that tonight on the uh, virtual award show with uh, the PEI Standard Horse Owners Association, Julep Hanover, uh, with the Fan Favorite Award, sponsored by the Shelltown uh, Vet Clinic. So congratulations to uh, Wade Myers, who's the trainer, driver, Sandy Myers. Just so many great highlights, and since arriving in PEI in 2013, made close to $60,000, came in at $59,262, and that hard-charging third-place victory, as she always puts in a great performance each and every time, on New Year's Eve. All right, next up, it's uh, the Pacer of the Year, and all the winners of the previous categories, pacing categories, and compared using the point system to select our 2020 Pacer of the Year. Let's have a look. Pacer of the Year, sponsored by Phillips V. The nominees for Pacer of the Year are Dusty Lane Goliath, Tobin's Brownie, Tobin's Rebel, Woodmere Skyroller, Time to Dance, Dream Fair Zen Fire. And the winner is Woodmere Skyroller, owned by Reg McPherson. Tried at the back, Woodmere Nash, they're halfway home, and it's Woodmere Skyroller in 56 and 4. Midway round the panic turn for the second time, over to the 5 8, led by Woodmere Skyroller. Dusty Lane, Zambuca second, Elm Grove Ocean third, foot on the outside, Tobin's Choice, roll with an Annie fifth, then the trailer, Woodmere Nash at three quarters is next, and Woodmere Sky Roller getting them there, Dusty Lane, Zambuca right on her back, 
Third at the rail is Elm Grove Ocean. Three quarters and one. 26 and one. We're down to an eighth to go. And the battle's on. In at the rail, Woodmere Sky Roller. Dusty Lane, Zambuca on the outside. Elm Grove Ocean third. Deep in the stretch now. Woodmere Sky Roller. It is close. Wow, what a way to finish it up. They're home in one 55 flat. Well, uh, another uh, highlight there, Woodmere Sky Roller. You know, we see uh, Brody McPhee in the, in the bike there as well. David Dowling uh, did a lot of work uh, with horse, spot a lot of miles in as well, and a lot of great performances here, guys. But, uh, boy, Reg McPherson had so many thrills. And I remember on New Year's Eve, we did a special presentation to Reg and the, and the only uh, connections there with uh, Woodmere Sky Roller. But, again, uh, another uh, winner to tonight, Pacer of the Year. Yeah, and she ended up uh, beating the Open Mares a couple starts at, at the end of the season, which is another feather in her hat after that historic season where she broke the earnings record and had all those great wins. For her to just reach up and beat the Open Mares to finish off the season, wow, that just uh, tipped it all off for me. Yeah, she was terrifically, and again, uh, yeah, kudos to Brody, who drove her at the first of the year, and uh, really, as I said earlier in the show, Brody said she just knew where the wire was, she could get there when she had to, and had a lot of wins for Brody, then David Dowling took over about midway through the season, and again, David pointed her a lot to the front, and they won a lot just off the wings and going right down the road, so again, terrific year, and as Kurt said, she moved up at the end of the year to face the uh, open mares, and did very well there, so again, she put it all together in 2020, well-deserved win. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, David Dowling, if you look at uh, what he did on on Breeders' Crown Sunday, Championship Sunday as well, had many wins, in, including including those. Well, you know, uh, one of the series that we started a couple of years ago was the uh, Birthplace of Confederation series, and it's sponsored by the city of Charlottetown. And Mayor Philip Brown, and there's quite a story that goes with this, but Mayor Philip Brown uh, wanted to be involved uh, along with the city uh, with harness racing. They wanted to come up with something that was also going to play tribute to those involved in the harness racing industry. And uh, through the years, it opened with uh, the late Brian Andrew, and and uh, last year, uh, Dr. Bob Webster. But uh, let's go to the Mayor, Philip Brown, now, who uh, is here to join us tonight in the virtual award show with the P.I. Stanford Horse Owners Association and his greetings from the city. Good evening. I want to say good luck to all the nominees and congratulations to the winners during tonight's virtual awards from the P.E.I. Standard Bread Horse Owners Association. Thanks to President Peter Smith and his directors for all their hard work and commitment. We are proud as the capital city of Prince Edward Island to present the Birthplace of Confederation series in memory of Diane and Shelley Gass. Diane and Shelley Gass are fondly remembered by the Atlantic Harness Racing family as passionate race fans and welcoming hosts at their firm. They were familiar faces at every racetrack in the region, closely following the exploits of the Dusty Lane horses and congratulating everyone who achieved success on the track. It is very appropriate that the 2021 edition of the Birthplace of Confederation series is named in Diane and Shelley's honor, as this series recognizes our great history and tradition of harness racing, a love of horses, as well as fellowship with your competitors, attributes they both exemplified. The Birthplace of Confederation series supports the local harness racing community and their invitational stars. Those involved, from the horses and owners to the grooms, trainers and drivers continue to produce a top of the line racing product that we are proud to showcase and be involved in. The eliminations for this exciting event will be held on Saturday, August 14th and Monday, August 16th during Gold Cup trial nights. The final will be held just prior to the Guardian Gold Cup and Saucer on Saturday, August 21st. A sincere thank you to the organizers and best of luck to all the participants this year. Stay safe, be smart, stay apart. Thank you. All right, that's the mayor, uh, Philip Brown, uh, bringing greetings on behalf of the city of Charlottetown. And uh, this year, the Birthplace Confederation uh, Series. Uh, guys, what more can we say? Obviously, uh, you know, this is third year for the series. Uh, it does great work. And uh, you couldn't ask for two better people. Uh, that the harness racing industry could play tribute to and that the uh, Birthplace Confederation Series could be named after. 
Absolutely, Lee. And again, we know them very well, uh, Diane and Shelly Gass, and uh, they are from the Cornwall area, Lee. They love Turner's Racing so much. They were there every night uh, cheering on Ronnie and all the Cornwall guys, for that matter. And uh, again, uh, to recognize Diane and Shelly, certainly uh, they are both worthy of this award. And uh, Kurt, it was so nice. Uh, I know that uh, the mayor is pretty excited about this uh, series as well. Uh, but uh, to have it in honor of uh, Diane and uh, Shelly Gass, uh, I think just a, just a wonderful touch. Absolutely. The matriarch of the Gas family. Uh, they've done so much for harness racing and Shelly as well. Just a, such a strong supporter of the game through uh, her years in the sport. And it just, what an honor. I couldn't think of two better people to name that race after this year. Well, the Birthplace Confederation Series uh, presented by the city of Charlottetown, as the mayor mentioned, uh, with the eliminations coming up on Gold Cup trial nights, and we'll have more on that as we continue on with the virtual award show here tonight from the PEI Standard Horse Owners Association. Thanks for tuning in. Sure hope everything's going well for you as uh, we have the People Awards coming up, so don't go away. And uh, right now, though, uh, the winners of the previous trot categories have been compared using the point system to select the 2020 Trotter of the Year. Trotter of the Year, sponsored by Kenmac Energy. The nominees for Trotter of the Year are Dusty Lane Milo, Striking Pride, Tequila Tuesday, Go With Her, Freddy, Hop Up. And the winner is Dusty Lane Milo, owned by Marcia Knox. Treasure on the Water is caught up fourth, and Fireball Friday is caught up to be the trailer fifth. They were halfway home in 103. And a one-fifth, just 32 and three in the second panel. They move over to the 5-8. Mr. Finlay Ridge is the leader. Ocean View, Archie second. There goes Dusty Lane Milo, trotting outside of third. Treasure on the water at the rail, fourth. Fireball Friday, the trailer. Three quarters next, and we've got a new leader. Dusty Lane Milo on the outside is taken over late for murder. Mr. Finlay Ridge is second. Third up the rail, that's Ocean View Archie. Treasure on the water and the outside fourth. And the trailer, Fireball Friday, three quarters in one, 35 and two. Homeward bound, the leader, Dusty Lane Milo. Mr. Finlay Ridge along the rail is second. On the wire next in the PEI Cold Stakes, Dusty Lane Milo and Adam Murner. Well, there's Dusty Lane Milo, and uh, with all the winners' previous trot categories, comes out uh, as another award winner here tonight. Uh, and, uh, Kurt, when you look at, um, you know, the performances over the year, uh, 10 times out of 10 starts and uh, winning four of those in the top three, that's a really impressive summary to have and uh, for, this, for this trotter. For sure. That was my favorite win of Dusty Lane Milo is when you consider the fractions, 103 and one down in three quarters, 135 and change and then to kick home 28 and 4 to win it i thought it was claire was stealing that race and uh for him to make up ground from the three hole and get around claire and clear to the lead and win it was just an incredible effort from him on that day really was uh, lee and they duked it out all year dusty lane milo and mr finley ridge they raced all across the maritimes finishing first and second every week dusty lane milo got the better of mr finley ridge there and he also won the lady slipper stake uh, in summerside in charlottetown the brian andrew and the pei colt so as you mentioned lee just a terrific year yeah a terrific year Thirty-seven thousand eight hundred four. can't wait to see the three-year-old season and uh, while we did see claire mcdonald in action there just want to take the opportunity of course we don't want to miss the opportunity with that hall of fame uh, nomination boy oh boy claire mcdonald has done so much in her career uh, and has been part of so many stake uh, races uh, over the years as well. So kudos to her. Absolutely. Congratulations to Claire. I'm sure she's watching uh, tonight. One of the best drivers ever to come out of the Maritimes, in my opinion. Lee, we had her on VTR earlier this year. She was a great interview. Uh, again, her family's been in harness racing forever. And uh, Kurt, you know her well. Uh, she certainly uh, deserves this. Yeah, absolutely. She's tough to drive against out there on the track. And uh She's had a really great career, and congratulations to her. And I also want to give a shout-out to uh, Bill Andrew. Uh, what he's done for the trot breed over the years with those two studs, Armbro Barrister and this guy's sire, Ted the Stud, just incredible. He's advanced the breed so far, and it, uh, I can't wait to see where it goes next. But uh, I thought I'd give Bill Andrew a mention here as he's done so much for the breed here on Prince Edward Island. 
Yeah, rightfully so, Kurt. And, uh, you know, I should also say we talked about the PEI matinee track program, something as well that uh, the Camfella Award winner Bill Andrew uh, has such passion for and uh, has been uh, sponsoring that as well with Meridian Farms. So, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of places that uh, Bill Andrew has been uh, part of it and uh, everything is moving forward in the horse racing game. And uh, you see that sprinkled in throughout the award show tonight. All right, guys, we're moving on now to the horse of the year and all the winners of the previous categories compared using the point system to arrive at the horse of the year horse of the year sponsored by atlantic veterinary college the nominees for horse of the year are woodmere sky roller dusty lane milo and the winner is woodmere sky roller owned by reg mcpherson third jj gracie bella for now fourth and the trailer is jj kinley halfway home the leader was Woodmere Sky Roller 57 and three was the half. Rounding the turn, second is Live and Let Die, continuing third, J.J. Gracie. Bella for now, fourth, the trailer fifth, J.J. Kinley. No movement, they're going to three quarters next, and Woodmere Sky Roller will be the leader. In at the rail, Live and Let Die, a textbook, two hole ride, J.J. Gracie third, Bella for now, fourth. J.J. Kinley, fifth, three quarters up in one, 26 and two, going to the seven, eight, Woodmere Sky Roller, the leader, and of the two hole pops, live and let die for the stretch drive, racing third, J.J. Gracie, Bella for now, fourth, deep stretch now, Woodmere Sky Roller, live and let die, Woodmere Sky Roller in the Ruby Chapel. And what a year for Woodmere Sky Roller. She had to bend her 2020 season and captured three-year-old pacing filly of the year, pacer of the year, and horse of the year for owner Reg McPherson of Stratford. Woodmere Sky Roller finished her sparkling campaign with an amazing 12 victories and 23 of 24 starts in the top three. She banked over $87,000 in purse money, and that set a single season earnings record. There were many highlights, including her victory in the Maritimer at Exhibition Park Raceway, where she won her fifth in a row over the New Brunswick Oval. With a track rated two seconds off, Woodmere Sky Roller equaled the track record of whiskey to wine set earlier in the year. And who could forget the $21,000 Cavendish Farms Atlantic Breeders' Crown pacing final, where she was put on the point and went coast to coast in 156 and 3. For trainer Kevin McLean and owner Reg McPherson of Stratford, David Dowling was in the driver's seat of the role with it, Harry Philly. Congratulations once again to Woodmere Sky Roller, the 2020 PEI Standard Bread Horse Owners Association. Horse of the Year, sponsored by the AVC Ambulatory Services. Now back to Lee Drake, Peter McPhee, and Kurt Hughes. Well, thanks very much, Vance. And uh, yeah, I guess that really is uh, the way to sum it. Eh? What a year for Woodmere Skyroller. It's tough to say, uh, you know, uh, we looked at the records and the summaries and the exciting fashion, but we'll get to another piece of that. But uh, Kurt, you know, uh, there's so many different angles with this, uh, with this horse that uh, it's just championship mode all season long yeah she loved the front end and no knew where the wire was she always won by just enough uh she never won by you know 10 or 12 lengths it was always by three quarters or maybe a length uh but she knew where the wire was and a great champion she was and uh kudos to bruce wood and woodmere firms what a season they had last year with her woodmere sky roller and woodmere steel deal uh just a fantastic year in 2020 for that firm and you know, Lee Woodmere Sky Roller, uh, just to mention, uh, not only did she win at Truro, Inverness, St. John, Summerside, but she also had a big one in October in Charlottetown. And uh, you're going to fill us in on that. Yeah, well, you know, the uh, Breeders' Crown, the Weekend of Champions, that's where, of course, it, it all comes to that. And uh, at the end there, the road leads to the Breeders' Crown. So let's have a look right now. Here she is in action with David Dowling in the bike, who also had a big day on that championship Sunday. Woodmere Sky Roller, a Breeders' Crown champion. Dusty Lane Zambuga, three quarters and one, 26 and three, turning for home, Woodmere Sky Roller looking to 
see it through. Watch me dance at the rail. Coming on the far outside, Street Gazanta. It's Woodmere Sky Roller in the Atlantic Breeders' Crown Final. Three-year-old Philly Pacers. So welcome back to the uh, PEI Standard Horse Owners Association Awards. Some great clips there, of course, uh, Breeders' Crown Weekend. Before you know it, it'll be here again uh, with the championships. And uh, let's hope we'll continue to roll on here with some great racing throughout the year and everybody gets opened up, especially all across uh, the Maritimes with the Atlantic Bubble. We should be hearing more about that soon. Let's move on to the People Awards now, guys. And, uh, well, we have the opportunity to do them this year. And we're going to start off with our female grooms of the year and they are Abby Klo and Alexis Gass. And again, uh, Lee, I, uh, I know Alexis uh, very well. Of course, you do as well. We both grew up in Cornwall. We grew up around Ronnie Gass's firm. And Alexis grew up around the firm as well. I had a chance to interview her on the inside track. And Lee, the work she does around that firm to get those horses ready is amazing, really. She uh, is not afraid to do anything around the Avern. She gets the horses to the track. Uh, she has a routine, Lee. And uh, we see her in the winner's circle quite a bit. So kudos to Alexis. She's a well-deserved winner. And I know, Kurt, you uh, know her friend, uh, good friend, Abby Klo, as well. Yeah, cousin Abby Klo. Abby's my cousin, and so yeah. I know her family very well, Dina and Les. And Dina's been racing horses for years. Uh, the last few seasons, Sanchez Blue Chip, who's your winner. Abby's been helping out with those horses. And as well uh, with the Rennie, uh, Melissa Rennie stable, helping out. And Ronnie Gass, Abby helps out with those uh, stables as well. And she was the groom of Magical Mistress in that magical season she had and a freshman campaign going undefeated. So Abby's done great work over the years as well as a groom. And you know what? They do a really tough job, and congratulations to them on uh, this award. Absolutely, and uh, Dina did a great job on the uh, inside track as well. Her mom That's has right. such great, uh, such great history, as you mentioned, with these uh, young female grooms uh, doing some great work. Well, our male groom of the year for the People Awards is going out to John McKay. And if you're all right, guys, I just want to tell a little story about uh, John McKay. Uh, first of all, um, it was the uh, took care of getting messy of course does a lot of work around the mcguigan stable there's there's no doubt about that but i want to tell a little story on breeders crown sunday mike mcguigan the driver of uh, getting messy uh actually reached out to us on the broadcast prior to and said if i'm lucky enough to get this because that he considered that going to be his gold cup win like he was yes. so excited with this uh with this horse and uh, he said i want i want you to do a shout out to john mckay because john does so much work in behind the scenes and so uh, kudos to you uh, john nice to see you recognized uh, here tonight for for all your hard work with the McWiggins table and within the industry as well. And I think, guys, I think Paul Murphy said it best in his book uh, when he came out with uh, Behind the Gate. He said, the grooms are the unsung heroes of our sport and we couldn't agree more well you know what uh, i'm uh, just uh, so pleased that mike reached out to you lee on that weekend because they had such a great year jamie whalen uh, mike the horse getting messy and uh, for them to recognize john and all the work he did day to day to get that horse ready every week yeah. lee and it culminated in winning the breeder's crown kudos to john for that yeah and a, and a, and a performance a record performance prior to that in the year but you you know uh kurt you've, you've worked with a lot of grooms over the years you see them in a lot of times the spotlight or the camera isn't on them but they do such incredible work with these horses yeah typically after the race they're interviewing the driver or the trainer but the groom is there at five o'clock in the morning doing all the work and all the grunt work and all the heavy lifting and uh they are really like uh, paul murphy said the unsung heroes of our game for sure mm -hmm. all right let's move on now to the rookie driver of the year it's sponsored by mark mcdonald of course what can you say about mark mcdonald and uh, what a nice touch too uh it must mean something to have this trophy sitting at home and uh, the rookie driver of the year started his driving career in 2019 a strong group of young drivers that he joins that here on prince of rhode island and uh, we're talking about zach conway yeah, and again, Lee, uh, Zach is getting more drives as he goes along. Uh, again, I know him and his dad, uh, Paul, have had some horses over the years. Brief interlude was one that they had, Lee, and uh, that horse raced uh, very well. Zach got his first win in 2019. He continues to drive, and uh, Kurt, he's, he's even driving uh, this year, already uh, starting out in 2021. Yeah, real nice filly there, Vicky, every day. He's doing a great job with her, too. She raced the other night, and he did a great job with her as well. 
You know, I wanted, uh, just before we get into uh, some of the other awards that we're going to go through here, I um, want to mention the Mr. Trot Challenge. Uh, guys, we've been around this game for a long time, and Harris Johnson has done so much for his investment on the track and in the winner's circle that he's been there many times. But he started a Trot Challenge back in 87, the Mr. Trot Challenge, and year after year after year. Now, last year I had to take the pause with the with COVID, but, uh, you know, he, he never missed a beat on it. And uh, I've known Harris a, a long time, and uh, he He's been doing that, and uh, you know some of the past winners. I remember, you know, if you look through some of the the winners: Gary Chapel, uh, Corey McPherson, Mark Cullen, Mark Campbell, Walter Chivery, Brian Mc, Brian McPhee. Just some of those: uh, Kenny Arsnow, of course. And uh, but you know, he he did find a way to make sure that uh, Mark Campbell was to, to pick up the uh, the award, and uh, you know he continues on with that. So uh, kudos to Harris Johnson and all those award winners over the years for the Mr. Trot Challenge. And we wanted to give you a shout out tonight with. Um, with your award and the great support over the years. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the uh, People Awards. The Leading Dash winner is sponsored by the city of Charlottetown and also the Leading Percentage Driver. The sponsor there is Greenhawk. So Mark Campbell is going to have uh, another truckload of awards here tonight because he picks both of those up in that category. And again, Lee, he's always at the top of the standings. Uh, again, it just seems to be there we, uh, week in, week out, year in, year out. I remember one year he was close with Jason Hughes, and they can break down to the wire on New Year's Eve. But uh, it seems like Mark has taken the mantle now, Lee, and uh, has been on top pretty much saw the last few years. We saw Time to Dance earlier in the card, Lee, and uh, his Gold Cup and Saucer win. So again, it just seems like Mark keeps climbing the ladder and wins in Charlottetown and across Prince Edward Island, the Maritimes for that matter. Yeah, well, you know, Kurt, uh, there was a special um, ceremony that we did a day uh, called the Driver of the Decade, and it's it's not very often in Charlottetown you get a driver like uh, Mark Campbell who continues to win the titles year after year, 10 years in a row. Yeah, to be Driver of the Decade 10 years in a row, it's just an incredible feat. I don't think people have realized how tough that is, especially with our deep driving colony here. We have a lot of talented drivers here, and for him to... Uh, dominate the way he did over that decade and even last year 179 victories over uh, half a million in earnings as a driver so just an incredible season and he continues to roll here in 2021. All right, well, Mark Campbell in the MCR stable with more hardware tonight, and we're not finished in those categories yet. Moving on to the percentage trainer between 25 and 75 starts. The sponsor there is Jack Keenan. Thank you, Jack. And the winner there is Chris McKay. And, uh, you know, there's another guy that, too, you know, you really have to look at the fact of uh, how many times uh, that we talk about all the people in the industry who uh, they may not have the biggest stables and they may not have the most starts, but they, they certainly play a key role in making the industry uh, move forward here in Prince Edward Island. And Chris is one of those guys, uh, Lee. He not only does it uh, week in, week out with the horses, he's also on boards across uh, Prince Edward Island as well, helping out from that angle as well. And uh, Chris always says his horse is ready to race, Lee. He races in Summerside uh, mostly, brings him to Charlottetown. They do very well. Of course, Jordan McKay, we know him as well. So again, congratulations to Chris on, on an award well-deserved, Kurt. Yeah, and Misty Memory and Simple Kind of Man, two that come to mind last year that Chris had uh, rolling. And also Sophus late in the year there reeled off a few wins in a row too. So he does great things and he always has his horses ready to rock on race night. Next is the percentage trainer over 75 starts. A sponsor is the Trophy Hut. So thank you for your continued support there. Jill's Berrio, uh, the Maritime Magic Man, multiple award winner with the O'Brien Awards. Just missed out on it again uh, last year. Guys, uh, he just shows up week in and week out. Simply put, Lee, he's one of the best in the Maritimes. He really is. He's proven it over the years to be a top-notch driver and a top-notch trainer. And again, he gets the award this year. Every time the burial horses step out onto the track, Lee, you got your eyes on them. He's usually in the mix every week. And it uh, just goes to prove what a great driver and trainer. Jill Liz, Kurt. For sure, 44 wins from 120 starts. His average, 552 for the year. And every single year, it seems to be up over 500. Just incredible numbers. Um, that's so hard to do, and, and he just seems to do it effortlessly year after year. So congrats to him on this award. Well, let's have a look now at the leading dash winning trainer. And as I said, uh, it's sponsored by Red Shores. And as I said a little earlier, Mark Campbell not finished yet with the uh, with the hardware tonight. And uh, I think it's very important, you know, we talk about the driver side of things, but uh, we all know how important it is to be a conditioner and to be dealing with the owners day in and day out. And, uh, the you know, the training uh, responsibilities that you have. And uh, this is not the first time Mark Campbell's won this award either. No, and kudos to, to Mark. As you mentioned, we all kind of know him as a driver, Lee, because he's uh, winning so many races 
over uh, his career in the Maritimes, and uh, we see him in the winter circle quite a bit. But his, his barn was really good again last year, Lee, and again, he sends out his horses. They're very, very sharp, Kurt, as you know, and every time a Campbell trainee steps on the track, they get a shot to win. So rolling on here tonight, the virtual award show with the P.I. Standard Horse Owners Association. And uh, we move on now to, well, a, a, a young lady who knows a whole lot about the Horse Owners Association because she's actually been a longtime director and past president of the P.I. Standard Horse Owners Association, Dr. Colleen Dickey. And uh, nice to get the uh, People Award here tonight. An important member of the harness racing community since relocating from her native Nova Scotia. Uh, well respected, uh, very active in the Weatherby stable, and um, horses like so much to say, Jig Time Smokey, acting uh, my way and cheers to jerry just to, to name a few yeah congratulations to, to colleen very well deserved and again uh, lee just want to mention also a longtime chair and member of the pei a standard horse owners awards banquet group that's put on every year colleen does great work there and also very active volunteer on the board of the pei harness racing industry association and a vocal advocate uh, for industry to government as well so again i want to shout out to uh, colleen very well deserved award she's a very hard working person in this industry yeah absolutely and kurt you know how important it is for people like colleen not only colleen but others but she's really done her part when it comes to work with uh, boards like this over the over the last number of years who work with several horsemen uh, absolutely uh, tireless effort uh, volunteer hours uh, with those um, associations um, you know she was uh, behind the, the new barn planning f for the new stable there uh, mm -hmm. when they um, moved all those horses into that new barn she was uh, key on that and she's a very respected veterinarian and I always see her out in the winter circle on race days with the Tommy Weatherby stable. And they've had a, so much success over the last number of years. Uh, that great mare so much more and others as well. So congratulations to her on this award. Okay, so next up on the uh, People Awards here tonight from the uh, PEI Standard Horse Owners Association. Congratulations going out to Eldred Nicholson. Boy, oh boy, there are a few people in harness racing, PEI harness racing, who have uh, ever volunteered more of their time than Eldred Nicholson and uh, part of an ownership uh, group of neighbors in North Wilshire and I remember this guy's uh, quite well uh, they were called the Morgan stable who campaigned uh, stakes uh, winners like nightly hit and I, I, I remember all the stories I was on the the, uh, the road the odd time with Eldred too uh, a few of them but uh, you know and then I know you're gonna really like this part uh, Peter started uh, naming uh, raising yearlings to sell local sales mostly named after his beloved Toronto Maple Leafs. I think I'm a big Leaf fan, Lee, and uh, I know a few others as well, but I think Elder tops the list of Toronto Maple Leaf fans, and uh, I love seeing Elder at the races. We always have a great chat about horse racing in general, but we always get around to the Leafs and start talking about the Leafs, and I really admired Eldred for He started naming horses after um, the Maple Leaf players, and uh, Kurt, I'll just touch on a couple, and you can follow up, but um, Mr. Salming was a real nice horse in the Maritimes, of course, named after Boria Salming, the great Leaf defenseman. He was a really nice horse, and Mr. Domi, tough guy Ty Domi, of course, we all remember him, played for the Leafs, and Kurt, I believe he had a really nice win at Woodbine, but you can uh, follow up on that. Yeah, he did. He had a mark of 150 and four taken at uh, Woodbine, that tough no winners of four, 100,000 life. And we all we also owned a couple uh, from Eldred's firm. Eddie's the man, I remember. Uh, Jason had one a few years ago, Mr. Cherry. So, yeah, quite the names. He uh, names them an elite fan. I guess that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's also uh, the past president and longtime director of the PEI Standard Horse Zone Association, past president, current director of the Atlantic Standard Breeders Association, and director and executive committee member for uh, for many of the industry association and director of the Atlantic Classic Sales. Now, the most dedicated horse person is sponsored by the Power Family, and this is the Arnold Weeks Memorial Award. And, uh, you know, uh, Joy Power, who does uh, such great work, of course, in our Standard Bird Canada field rep and uh, within uh, the business as well. But uh, we do have um, the winner, and I am going to read uh, some pieces uh, that you put together today because it's it's really something special. And uh, it's going out to David Wilkie. Of course, we know him uh, as Limer. And... Um, example of what any horseman or horsewoman should aspire to be uh, david heads the track he brings with him an exemplary work ethic dedication and determination that is second to none now that's a great way to to lead off a dedication uh, award for sure uh, above all else, he, he always puts the horse health and needs first. He spends countless hours, any time devoted to his horses. Uh, on occasion, he's watched a horse come into his barn. Uh, he takes that countless hours to take care of that horse. And he doesn't have a Gold Cup champion horse, but he treats every single horse 
in his care as if they were a champion. And I know David and Shelley over the years, we both know them. Uh, they have done uh, some great work and had some great horses. And it's uh, such a special award for, for David Wilkie to, to get that here tonight. If you look at uh, some of the, the burns that he shares, too, uh, with, the, with the others, he's got a little family. David's burn mates need a hand. He's first to jump in to help, whether it's bringing in hay, um, stripping the horses. And you know what? One thing about it was, Kurt, he's always got a smile, and he always treats everybody the same. Absolutely. He's had a great career as a man around the track. I mean, this guy knows how to rub one. Um, I remember back in the day, any horse with lameness issues, he just spends countless hours um, if they have any soreness or anything, he's tubbing them and he's just um, there day and night out in the center field grazing them. He takes great care of horses. And like I say, if they have any lameness issues at all, uh, give it to him for a little while. And I guarantee you're going to see victories. He's done it over the years with many aged horses and even more recently with horses like Maka Balikil come to mind. And even last year with Clever Thing late in the year uh, with son Kyle Wilkie. Uh, doing the training duties. They reeled off a few in a row to end the season. So he's great with the uh, horse with any soundness issues. And this ward is so deserving for uh, Limer. David and Shelley's oldest son is an owner, trainer. Their middle son works with the Mark Campbell stable and the youngest son helps out with the family, ensuring the Wilkie family continues to build a legacy in the harness racing industry. Hey, congratulations to you, David. That's what you have uh, with some great, uh, you know, awards tonight, people awards. So congratulations going out to you. Speaking of that, Bob Conley uh, is our next award winner tonight. And guys, I can't think of uh, another guy that uh, has put so much time and effort and dedication into the sport of harness racing here in Prince Edward Island. He's been an active member of the PI harness racing industry for six decades. Uh, been a longtime breeder with his horses uh, harness racing uh, course with the RE's prefix. Yeah, and again, Lee, he's another well-deserved uh, award winner here. Bob's been around the harness racing game for a long, long time. You mentioned the RE's prefix. We all remember some of the great horses that have come out of Bob's uh, farm. And uh, Lee, we all remember him at the sale as well. We see him every year. He's the guy that's taking the bids with the cowboy hat on in the stands. And uh, Bob's there every year taking those bids. And a uh, big shout out to Bob. Uh, Bob, you deserve this. Congratulations on your award. And Kurt, I know you've been at the sale as well, seeing Bob up there before. Yeah, he's up in that podium there with the uh, cowboy hat on, taking bids. And uh, and he had great Philly there just a couple of years ago, Ari Shabla uh, for Mike McGuigan there. She had a terrific campaign. And he's been uh, a great member of our industry for many, many years. And so this award, very deserving for him. Yeah, uh, Shabla earned over 100000 uh, Of course, you can't forget uh, Atlantic Breeders' Crown winner Ari's Mary, a yes. winner of 219000 So many of those. Many volunteers in the Atlantic Sire Stakes. Uh, I remember him well when uh, he was a member with, uh, he was a board member with Standard Bear Canada as well. Um, so he did a lot of work, not only here in Prince Edward Island, but across the country. So congratulations going out to you, Bob. All right, we're going to end things off tonight. And uh, this one here, uh, the, the Active Horse Person of the Year is sponsored by the PEI Harness Racing Industry Association. The Active uh, Horsewoman of the Year is sponsored by one, Hot 105.5 and Ocean 100. And uh, we also want to thank the Horse Person of the Year. And that's, uh, of course, the PEI Standard Bird Horse Owners Association. So thank you for your sponsorships of those incredible awards. Awards. And finally now is the Standard Bird Canada Owner of the Year, sponsored by, you guessed it, Standard Bird Canada. And uh, guys, uh, uh, an, an owner that we know very well, uh, who's been very uh, dominant over the last number of years and one of the most successful owners, and Mr. Blair Hansen. Yeah, Lee, and again, I didn't realize that his first horse was uh, Harmony P, who won the Gold Cup, and Saucer Constellation finished second in the final the next day. And Kurt, maybe you can follow up on that as well. I just want to touch on Rose Run Quest, though, Lee, and how good that horse has been over the last a few years in the Maritimes, really winning top-notch races across the Maritimes. Blair, a big part of that. So congratulations, Blair, on your award. You've had some great, great horses over the years. And uh, Kurt, Harmony P, we all remember that horse. Yeah, I definitely remember Harmony P. I remember Blair getting into the game with uh, Hilliard Graves uh, back in the day, and they had so much luck with that Harmony P horse. And they, I still remember that, the Gold Cup and Consolation win, and then drew into the final with a scratch of a horse and uh, raced great the next day as well. And Rose Run Quest, how about that? What a purchase. They purchased him out of Saratoga uh, for not a lot of money. And th this guy came to the island, and the thrills he gave the Hanson family was just incredible. I remember third in the Gold Cup and Saucer final, and against some really heavyweight horses. So uh, congratulations to Blair here on this award. 
You know, uh, one of the awards that uh, we wanted to talk about and didn't mention, uh, get, off our, get out of our script here, was the Percentage Trainer, over 75 starts, and that's sponsored by Trophy Hut, and uh, Jill's Barrio was the, was the winner of that, so congratulations going out to you. All right, well, that uh, takes us part of the People Awards, the horse categories here tonight, and uh, many of the sponsors that we have. We'll get to those in uh, just a minute, but right now, we'll wrap things up with the President of the PEI Standard Bird Horse Owners Association, Peter Smith. Hello again, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our presentation this evening and no doubt brought back many memories of from last year's racing, which we are looking forward to seeing on the racetrack once again this coming year. To the owners and connections of all the winners and finalists that were recognized this evening, we congratulate you all for the success you enjoyed on 2020 and for giving our race fans many thrilling moments throughout the racing season. To be a winner, or to be called successful in our world of harness racing, this comes in many ways and means. As we've seen here tonight, by recognizing individuals with a trophy for their on-track performances is one way. But to others, it may be their homegrown two-year-old making its first lifetime start or breaking their maiden after many attempts to do so. Success to others may come in the form of a mare delivering a healthy foal in the middle of a night and watching his or her take her first few steps on her way, way to a successful racing career. We could give many examples of how to measure success and winners, but to each of us in our sport of harness racing, the smiles on our faces tell our own successful story. At this time, I would like to recognize some of the great achievements outside of our PEI community in harness racing. As we all know, PEI PEI has developed many great talented horses and horse people over the years and 2020 was an exceptional year for PEI at the highest level in our sport. The 2020 O'Brien Awards were held this past winter and the O'Briens were filled with PEI connections. Our association would like to congratulate the following horse people, all of whom have PEI connections with their great achievements this past year uh, at the O'Briens. To start with, uh, the Future Star Award, two PEI <coughs> uh, finalists were nominated, Austin Surrey and Rachel Andrew. Again, both from PEI were <coughs> with Austin Surrey winning this category. Congratulations to Austin uh, uh, winning this category and as well, congratulations to Rachel as well. In the Age Pacing Mare category, the finalist was so much more a mare that was bred by Doug McPhee of New Haven and trained and broke here by Tom Weatherby. So much more was driven in all their starts by James McDonald, the PEI native that we all are well familiar with, the McDonald family. And as well, Jill's Barrio was a finalist for Horsemanship of the Year. Again, Jill's a perennial contender each and every year for a, a various category at the O'Briens. And also Dr. Ian Moore. Ian had a tremendous year on the racetrack with his horses as the O'Brien Award winner this past year won no less than three categories this year with this past year with his two-year-old pacing colt Lawless Shadow, his three-year-old colt Tattoo Artist, and Century Pharaoh winning the Age Pacing Horse of the Year category. And to top it all off, on top of everything, Century Pharaoh was named Canada's Horse of the Year for 2020. Congratulations to Dr. Ian Moore and all his connections with these horses for a tremendous and fantastic year on the racetrack last year. Also of note, I would like to make recognition of some other, uh, of another horse that has gone on to, to be dominant on, in the North American racing scene, another locally uh, bred uh, and developed horse, by the, a trotter by the name of Love by the Masses. This trotter was bred, raised by Wade Bacconi of Stanchel and after a successful Ontario Sire Stake trotting uh, two and three year old seasons on Ontario, he has now gone on and has raced from the best trotters in North America at the Meadowlands where he, is, where he has just recently taken a record of, of 151 and four. Another tremendous result from Prince Edward Island Horseman in 2020. In closing, I would like to thank the people who made our presentation possible this evening. Thanks to Lee Drake, Peter McPhee, Vance Cameron, and Kurt Hughes for their professionalism in their presentations. To UMI Sports, Scott McLean and crew for their video production. 
and to Kent Oaks for his industry insights and information. And to our banquet committee, headed by Gail McDonald and Betty Gregan. Thank you all for helping put this production together. Finally, a big thank you to all our sponsors who certainly continually support our association each year. Without their support, presentations and events like this would not be possible. Again, thank you to all of you who supported the PEI Standard Bread Horse Ownership membership in 2020. And let's hope that we can put the struggles of COVID-19 and strangles and all that came with it in our rear view mirror as we forge ahead into the new year. Good luck to you all in 2021, and we hope you find the winner's circle. Thank you. Well, uh, thanks to uh, Peter Smith there. There's the president of the PEI Standard Bird Horse Owners Association. Uh, kudos to all of the folks, uh, the directors uh, and the sponsors. We'll roll the credit sponsors here uh, coming up in a minute. But uh, guys, uh, these virtual award shows, uh, Universum Studio, that's where we are tonight. Uh, they're not easy to, to put together. There's a lot of work and a lot of scheduling. So we want to thank everyone uh, that uh, put the time and effort into uh, making this happen. And let's hope that next year we'll be back into uh, an area that we have all of the folks out to, uh, to actually do the, the awards in person. Absolutely, Lee. I think everybody's thinking along the same lines. Congratulations to all the winners tonight in the 2020 awards. We're up and rolling for 2021 already. We're lucky to be racing. We know that. We hope we can get the fans back soon. But, Kurt, uh, looking forward to some big events in 2021. Yeah, I can't wait for the season to continue to get rolling here. We get off to a really hot start in Charlottetown uh, with a great wager and great racing. So, Hopefully it continues here and we can all get the fans back to the track. I can't wait for it. Yeah, uh, we have both tracks up and going. Uh, going to be an exciting season in Charlottetown and in Summerside. And by the way, Red Shore Summerside celebrating 135 years of racing on Prince Edward Island. So congratulations to all them. So, so the PEI Standard Bird Horse Owners Association Awards, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us and all the best this season. Mm -hmm.